to Face to Face and today we're going to talk about books, we're going to talk about indigenous community, we're going to talk about Mexico, maybe Colombia. <laughs> I'm with Javier uh, who did uh, a book on searching for my indigenous. Yeah. Indigena, yeah. And uh, welcome to Face to Face, Javier. Thank you so much, Tlazokamati. It's a um, Sihika. It's uh -huh. thank you in uh, Nahuatl and in Chipcha de Colombia. Okay. Nahuatl de Mexico. It's an honor. It's an honor to be here. No, welcome, welcome. So you are from from, from where? From, from from Mexico or from Colombia? I'm, or? I'm from Brooklyn first. From Brooklyn. Know, I was, ah, I was, I was now born I understand. Raised, it is in you know, Brooklyn. <laughs> the Lenape territory of Brooklyn. Okay. You know, my parents are from Mexico and Colombia. Okay, great. Yes, yes. Okay. And so. I know the indigenous community in New York, it's big community. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so you belong to the uh, indigenous community in New York? Mm -hmm. Yeah, as well, definitely. Pues, well, sorry, so I fall into Spanish sometimes, That's you fine. know. Um, the indigenous, real, like um, domestically, historically, mm -hmm. there um, are thousands in New York State, you know, actually like a million. Uh -huh. Be that as it may, like, um, the, how can I say, migrated instead of saying immigrated because it's like all indigenous land and all human land pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, of course, there's a lot of Ecuadorian indigenous from Ecuador yeah. and from Guatemala, Mexico, Bolivia. Colombia, and Bolivia. And um, yeah, my, my father's from Mixteco areas in Puebla. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And my mother is from the great Chipcha territory, uh -huh. in Colombia. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. so, so how did you what is the need to belong to indigenous community? What, what, mm -hmm. what, what is, because I know it's a strong, even for the new generation, they want to keep their roots. Definitely, definitely. Well, the thing is, we're often recognized solely as Hispanic and Latino, okay. even from the federal government and down. And um, when I would see what is defined as Hispanic and Latino in the, in the media, mm -hmm. I didn't feel you myself... I didn't feel myself included. Yeah, you don't, you don't, yeah. I didn't agree with it. I, I, when I would see myself, apparently I was a, an alcoholic, a criminal, in the novelas, in the... Oh, yeah, the, I see. The, what was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> On the shows. The soap the operas, series, yeah, the soap, soap operas, opera, yeah. exactly. Uh -huh. And I, I was like, um, we have attorneys, we have professional people, I am not an mm -hmm. alcoholic, I'm not a thief, I'm mm -hmm. not a criminal. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was like, I have to search, I have to seek out. The term Hispanic was established under the Richard Nixon administration. Um, when he divided peoples up into about six races, pretty much. Um, with that, it's not a, a term decided by the people itself. So I, I definitely don't agree. It's not a racial term, you know, because um, when people of color, like black people, they have a term black, they, there's, a un, uh, a, there's a unity. Also with indigenous people, there's a unity. You know, there's a, a place, there's an identity, and yeah. identity is essential. And, and you have a historical yes. problem. I mean, it's, it's huge, it's a big, big historical uh, uh, history on, on, on indigenous community in North America and South America and, and Central America. Definitely. So, um, how do you how did you end up doing this book? Um, I've always loved books. I love loved reading and mm -hmm. writing. Mm -hmm. um, how can I say? Since very young, a lot of the books that I came across when I was younger, they were indigenous books. Um, some of them pretty like stereotypical um, Hiawatha, but um, in essence, it was they were good stories. Um, so with that, I've always just written little pieces of papers here and there. Then when I got to um, college level and graduate school, I had then um, searched certain research papers, which um, how can I say empowered me more. Like the the, or, the origin of the Constitution and the structure of government in the United States is based on the Iroquois or the Haudenosaunee in upstate New York. Mm -hmm. Benjamin Franklin he would go up from up there down to Philadelphia to take these, uh, their constitution, not perfectly adapted, but the substance is there and put it into the U.S. Constitution and the structure, structure of government. Oh, wow. Yes. And and that's on your book? That is in the book, in the appendices. So it's, it's a historical uh, contribution of the indigenous community into the U.S. Yes, politics? It, it, it wasn't like pretty much voluntary because there's no official recognition. Uh -huh, there, there is a slight official recognition of the 200th anniversary on the 4th of July when the U.S. Senate, they do um, recognize where its origins. John F. Kennedy, he also um, publicly spoken on, verbally recognized uh -huh. the, the Haudenosaunee um, recognition. Uh -huh. Yes, they advanced themselves through the U.N. and they're of an official nation themselves 
It's the, the, the one of them, one of them the Haudenosaunee um, groups, one of the nations, um, one of the federations. They, uh, the, Or the Onondaga, their official nation, they have their own passport to travel with. It's not a American. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, that's new, no? That's like two. two It's two, about two, 20 years uh, no. or so, I think. I thought it yes. was new energy, mm -hmm. yeah. So, but it seems to me then the indigenous community get revived. Mm -hmm. It's a new, it's a new beginning in some ways in many places. Yes, yes. And I know, I mean, We, we are following the, the peace process in Colombia, and I know the indigenous community in Colombia was a strong, mm -hmm. uh, active uh, community in supporting the peace process. And I think with what's happening in, in Mexico, I think the, the indigenous community has been a big contribution to the election or to the, the, the progressive process. Yes, yes, definitely. I mean, for there have been some advances or uh, They're minor or whatnot, some people can say. But um, I think I would have to still personally, just so people know, because unfortunately we don't get as much media attention um, as we should. Mm -hmm. This is a huge part of the, the world, you know. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of commercial media, so I have to mention, of course, the assassinations in Mexico and yeah. Colombia and constant. In Colombia, it's been very excessive, yeah, yeah. especially in the, the end that's closer to, to Ecuador. Yeah. And um, it's been of leaders, indigenous yeah. leaders who yeah. are trying to take care of the environment yeah. that we all need. Yeah. You know, our waters against these mining communities and uh, it's all for like all these many corporate interests. Yeah. And it's unfortunate. Do you know anything about the Mapuche in Chile and the story with the land and because it was a big, big, uh, it's a big fight. And I know I have a friend who is a, uh, uh, the, from the Humanist Party who has been just elected and is into Congress and he's been very supportive of the indigenous mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. uh, with the Mapuche who are having a very, very complicated time right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's um, co coincidental that you, you mentioned that because um, yesterday at the conference in the Haudenosaunee um, territory up there, um, one of the leaders who came from South America is from Chile and he's yeah. Mapuche. Mm -hmm. And so he declared um, on a, through a book that he wrote to the Pope this um, condemnation of the doctrine of discovery, which stated that whenever uh, a white man of Christian um, background goes anywhere in the world, this was in 1492 itself, early on, yeah. um, wherever there's not, not these people, they're not human. You, can you have free reign over the territory. And like based on that, there's, um, how can I say, there's, there's legal challenge to all these presidents, to territorial presidents, precedents. And so this um, this brother, I mean, como se llama, this Machpuche brother, Arauca, um, he stated right there publicly, in unison with the support of the Haudenosaunee Nation, to his uh, neighbor of the Pope, because he's from Argentina. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that he, he mentioned a story where like 30 of their people were taken away, 30 children. Uh -huh. And they said, oh, we're going to turn them into priests, yeah. um, into Catholic priests. Yeah, of course. And then doing that and one of them was a strong leader uh, the son of a big leader and yeah. and when he took him out there he died unfortunately and there's never been no apology and he's looking oh. for that recognition yeah he's on his way to john f kennedy so i'll bring i'll bring him this he wanted to speak with another brother who's here in the bronx who's like the last of his people because he was adopted and taken to the bronx and he lives in the bronx oh wow, wow, no yeah, yeah Car please. carlos Maidel. yeah yeah Because here, I know in New York, we have a big, now it's a big discussion about Columbus Day oh, and, yeah, and the Columbus uh, statue, and you have a rally every year. Mm -hmm. And, and the rec I mean, as being not recognizing, as not discovering a territory where already people were living. So yes. it's like how you can discover something who already exists. I mean, exactly. it's, 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 it's really... A, exactly. Uh, yeah, thank you for saying that. I was at those talks, those discussions. It was... One in each borough. I was on the one in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. and um, it, it was very weak. They had a little, a little commission of diverse people. I mean, it, it wasn't just focused on, on the the um, Columbus. Uh, unfortunately, it was spread th thin. There was um, allowance to um, for the um, what is it? The, the European doctor who was big on using African American for experiments on abortion and whatnot, or just on their on their physique, on their bodies. And that was in Central Park. That one was removed through this uh, conference or whatnot. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if it's been officially removed yet, but the decision was the, to, for to that one in the least. The statue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Yes. So, who who you target your book to? Who who you want? To read your book, I mean, I mean, it's, it's welcome any anybody to, to read the book. <laughs> of course, I, I feel it's a, it's a, it's also a declaration uh -huh. for a comparative study for pre people growing up in an urban area versus um, a pueblo or a reservation, and that they're still indigenous, you know, conscious and helping out their community even though from afar and to go uh, once in a while. Um, but I guess the main focus, I guess, is the the people who are, are Spanish speaking who might be unsure of their indigenous background, descent, or identity. Um, I wrote it at a, at a, how can I say, and I don't want to say a mediocre or lower level and less advanced, but a lot of people, a lot of our people, honestly, might not be read, read as much. They might be busy working a lot. So it's, um, it was abbreviated for, for a lot, uh, a wide uh, mm -hmm. group of people, mm -hmm. you know, in the Americas. Mm -hmm. I myself had taken the book um, to Mexico, to like um, the capitals of every country from Mexico, down to um to uh, Colombia, and um, in, a, in a capital library, and in a library in a small community, and yeah. I've um, donated throughout those places. I'm I'm still missing Belize and uh, Panama and the rest of South America, but hopefully you can go to Belize. I mean, then. yes, yes, I'm definitely gonna. <laughs> <laughs> Such a beautiful place. Or definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. So what, what are you doing in New York? Uh, f and, and how do you work with the indigenous community? Mm -hmm. So through the Associated Indigenous Movements, uh -huh. which um, I've also helped to found, um, we focus, we um, tell our people abroad and here, of course, locally, that since we're in New York, the money center of the world or whatnot, but business, we have access to a lot of these corporations close by. Um, so I tell them, like, let us know who they are so we can just knock on their door and just go in or have a formal meeting. For example, in, um, the uh, Mitsubishi has windmills in Oaxaca because it's some of the strongest winds in the world. So with that, we had a meeting and spoke with them about what's going on um, because these, Mitsub it's, uh, these uh, windmills are just taken without permission and without consultation. And um, so on behalf of the peoples out there, with their permissions, of course, not just to impose We've um, been ha we've had dialogues, you know. Also at the United Nations, we uh, have a, a community support for our people when they come here, rather than paying hundreds of dollars, staying in hotels, and uh, that a lot of them of us don't have every night. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you organize people to 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 be active and start to protect their land or their resources or either definitely yeah definitely especially through through the business and you know you can like boycott or boycott um certain products um a lot of the, the boycott we we talk a lot about um coca-cola and against coca-cola from their damage and union assassinations down to um to to, to, to colombia um and it's just it's a dam damaging um liquid in itself um so with that and also the buy the promotion of buying certain products. Um, how can I say? Like the um, clothing, and there's also like um, a lot of products that come from indigenous peoples um, that we promote as well. Um, so yeah, there's like coffee from Chiapas as well that we help promote, and also cigars or whatnot. Um, economically, we have to help our people in that way. And mm -hmm. boycotting like, like Chiquita bananas, you know, I had to tell my mom the other it day. It was a I big was like, company, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, and Colombia is very yeah, yeah. damaging. Yeah, very damaging, yeah. Yes. Do you have, we are, we are closing, do you have any things you want to plug? Do you have uh, any information you want people to know that we didn't talk about? Um, I guess uh, we can look forward to our um, events in the future. We mm -hmm. have an event, it's uh, Tian Kisli, and probably we might try to have it in Casa Mezcal again. And the people enjoy it. So Tianquisli is the word for Tianguis, which in um, Mexico is a market. It's a Nahuatl word from, for market. The original mm -hmm. word is Tianquisli, so now it's Tianguis. Um, so um, we'll probably have that in the, the winter for like the, around the Christmas season. Great. And um, yeah, yeah, looking forward to that. Okay. And then good luck with the books. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. For thank you so much. It. Yes, yeah. yes. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. Okay. So that was uh, our show face to face and uh, please keep watching your news on presenza.com and hope to uh, see you very soon.